I've owned quite a few mist filters in the past and I still have just one left and I'm using it right now. The way I feel about mist filters is I really like what they do in the right circumstances. It's just that when it comes to actually putting it on my lens and using it, I can't seem to commit. And it's because of the fear of the effect being too pronounced, the image becoming too soft and dreamy and not being able to do anything about that in editing. So I stopped using them. Then the other day, my plugin developer buddy, Eric, told me about his new plugin, Bloom Mist. And in theory, if this works, could take the place of bloom or mist filters. And if this works, this makes perfect sense because if you're like me, I don't like to bake in too much of any kind of effect into my footage, you know, too much contrast, too much sharpening, softening, anything like that. I just like as blank a canvas as possible when I start. So I really wanna see if this can impart the same kind of nuance that you get with a mist filter and ultimately whether this can save you buying one and then save you the decision of whether to use a mist filter or not. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bit you want, no problem. I was also able to get you a discount code which you can use for anything on Eric's website. Just use the code HARV at the checkout. For 10% off, you are welcome. I'm on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers so it'd really make my day if you could take the time to hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, really helps me out, and I appreciate it, and I thank you in advance. Eric, of course, sent me the plugin for free to check out, but you know what? It's not expensive, and I would have bought it anyway to do the review. He knows that this video may contain criticism. He doesn't care, and I'm not going to change what I put in this video um, because he's a buddy. So. That's that. So mist filters, what do they even do? I find that they gently lift shadow areas. They really subtly kind of soften detail, kind of removing that sort of digital kind of horrible uh, over sharpened look that you can get on uh, modern cameras. And of course, they will bloom highlight areas. Like you can see, I've got my lamp there and some, uh, some LED lights behind me. The resulting effect can be really pleasing, albeit not for everyone, of course, but flattering skin tones, soft and kind of dreamy looking highlights. It's all very subjective, but these are all things that Eric has tried to encapsulate in this plugin. So let's take a look. So I've got this clip and I've dropped the blue mist plugin onto it and here you can see the controls there's a variety of different sliders that we can use to shape this mist filter first up we've got the light threshold and this of course determines at what luma levels this plugin should start working the mask mode is a really handy thing it gives you a very kind of easy representation so you can see what's happening i do recommend adding some of this smooth light roll off slider because without it it's very kind of harsh a very hard threshold i'm gonna set it so that just the brighter parts of my skin and the highlights that you can see from my lights are selected. But you may notice this has actually added a little bit of sort of some hot spots on my skin and that's where we would use the highlight recovery slider and as you can see this does a phenomenal job. So I recommend always checking this and you're probably going to want to turn it up to be honest. The highlight recovery smooth roll off slider kind of does the same thing as the smooth light roll off slider. It just makes the kind of hardness of the effect more gentle and then under the bloom tab we have the two sliders which are going to make the most difference to the amount of bloom that you're going to see diffusion is how far the effect spreads and projection is the light strength a good way to dial this in perfectly is actually to turn the projection up to 100% and the diffusion all the way to zero and then slowly add more and more diffusion until you get the look that you're going for and then back down on the projection you should be able to get this dialed in perfectly this way we also have have a global setting so you know you can dial it in and then if it seems too much you can back that one down a little bit and it will affect everything it's really quite elegant and so here's the clip that I started with you can see there's lots of contrast there's no 
blooming of the highlights indicating, you know, there's nothing in the way of the lens and there's no Bloom Mist plugin applied. And then when I switch to using a real mist filter, which is the Revo Ring 1/8 strength mist filter, it looks like this. We can see a noticeable difference in contrast. The highlights are blooming, the shadows are slightly lifted, and there's a definite softening that you can see in my skin tone and the other detail areas in this shot. I know this is not for everyone, but I do like this. And then switching back to the original shot, but with Bloom Mist plugin applied, and I've tried to replicate as closely as possible the look that we've got in this shot. It looks like this. And I think this is alarmingly close. If anything, there's maybe slightly more contrast. It hasn't quite lifted the shadows as much. But you know what? I showed this to a few people who, you know, kind of know what they're doing when it comes to video, and they had a hard time telling which was which and that's a good sign. The only thing I'd say is I think perhaps this hasn't quite encapsulated all of the kind of nuance you get from something physical being in front of a lens. This is still really impressive and I think this is going to be a game changer for some people. So there we go, I thought that was super interesting and now to my pros and cons and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros and this is surprise, surprise, cheaper than a proper mist filter, especially with my discount code. Subjectively and arguably, I would say you don't need to bake in that mist filter look anymore if you don't want to, because the results that I got were really close to the real thing. Bloom Mist plugin does the job of a wide range of mist strengths with the ability to fine tune the effect. This cannot be underrated because if you want to switch from a more gentle to a more pronounced effect, you need multiple filters, but not with this plugin. Lastly, this doesn't affect the shadows if you don't want it to, and that's something that's really nice. I don't always want my shadows to be lifted when using proper mist filters. Sometimes I just want to maintain the contrast and bloom the highlights. This plugin does it. And onto the cons, and subjectively I would say the effect you get from the plugin is slightly less nuanced compared to the real thing. It is a difficult task for a plugin to accomplish, but you know what? It's close enough for me. Initially, I found it a little tricky to get the balance right of some of the sliders, but once I found the sweet spot, it was just kind of set and forget and just, you know, you can save that as a preset of your own. Finally, to my opinion, and just to preemptively intercept all of the inevitable comments of people saying, Harv, Resolve already does this. Look, I know, okay, Resolve is great. Resolve is impressive, all the features it has, yes, great. But for my workflow, it, it doesn't, it's just not my bag. Final Cut, I find, is just w much more intuitive. With Resolve, I find I'm going around the houses and it takes lots more commands to get to where I want to be. It's just my opinion. I, you know, nothing against any other software. That's just my bag, baby. But as for this plugin, Initially, when I started using it, I was a little puzzled by all of the different sliders and I was kind of flip-flopping between going, you know, is anything actually happening here? And whoa, too much, stop. But as soon as I started to find the balance between the sliders, it all clicked and just started to make sense. It's like I had found the sweet spot and I think I was able to get it really very close to you know, the effect I was getting from my Revo Ring 1.8 mist filter. By all means, copy my settings. I'll pop them here for you. This should give you a really good starting point for if you're using this plugin for that kind of, you know, uh, less, less pronounced effect, more subtle effect mist filter. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Definitely let me know in the comments section and I'll be down there as much as I can. I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has selected this video for you to watch next, so do what you're told. <laughs> and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.